name is Simi J. Patoko. My pronouns are they, them. And my name is Hannah Crawford, and my pronouns are she, her. And we are... The Dreaming Divas. We are a podcast inspired by the Screaming Divas. And it is our goal to create a similar platform, but from the perspective of a young singer. Today, we had the pleasure of chatting with Morgan Reed, soprano, interdisciplinary artist, and social media manager. We talked a lot about how to seek management, movement training for singers, and what you need to create a portfolio career. Before we get into the podcast, we would like to graciously acknowledge that together we reside, learn, and create on the land of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabewaki, Mississauga, Wendaki, Neon, Winseo, and neutral people. We seek re-indigenization. We stand with the Indigenous community and welcome Indigenous voices on this platform. We are grateful to be working and learning on and about this land, and we honor these communities as traditional stewards of these lands. We hope you enjoy the interview. You'll be sure to check it out. Ding! Ding! Well, Morgan, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, would you like to start off with your land acknowledgement? Yes. Uh, I would like to acknowledge today that the land on which we are gathering, or that I am joining this gathering from is the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Métis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And I am originally from Nova Scotia, from Cape Breton Island, which is the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. Awesome. Fantastic. We'll start off with a little 60 second life story. Feel free to leave in all the good bits. The timer is right here for your viewing whenever (laughs) you're ready. (laughs) I like the setup. I know, I'm (laughs) being in the zone. Okay. (laughs) All right. right. As I said, I'm from Nova Scotia. I grew up in Cape Breton. Uh, I was not really exposed to any classical music whatsoever, but I did want to uh, go to school. I love school, love academia at the time. Uh, I grew up being uh, solely in musical theater, singing only musical theater, uh, and I learned my first three art songs (laughs) and um, did my undergrad in in classical voice at Mount Allison University, and uh, that sort of changed my whole life. I still always do concurrently music theater and uh, classical voice, Um, and then I moved to Toronto in 2018. Since then, I've completed my master's in voice performance at the University of Toronto. I'm currently doing my doctorate in voice performance at the University of Toronto. Uh, I also work as an arts administrator at Dean Artist Management, and I have done arts administration for many things. I'm also a stage manager. I'm watching the clock go down. I teach voice, and I'm a social media manager for many people, groups, and organizations. Wow. I definitely sped up as we neared the end there. (laughs) That's okay. You had to fit a lot in. Holy cow. That's so cool. Okay. Well, one of the things that um, uh, we know that uh, you had interest in talking about was um, your work with the Association for Opera in Canada. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So during the, I guess it was, I was going to say during the pandemic, as if that's not still happening. Um, (laughs) But I guess it was 20, the 2020-2021 season, I applied to their, uh, their fellowship program uh, for portfolio artists. And I thought, okay, number one, that was a new word to me at the time. And then I thought, huh, I think that's what I would label my own self. Um, because I sing, but I also do the things that, you know, people would say other are other, but adjacent. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, so I applied. They were like, yeah, come on in. I initially was like, okay, what what is this going to be? But it was so supportive and phenomenal to do, I think, during that time as well. Because I wasn't singing. Who was? Um, I wasn't really doing anything. I was actually back in Nova Scotia for uh, for about six months, so during that time. And, you know, every week we met, we all chatted about where we were at. We talked about um, singing. We talked about what we can bring to our industry. We had guests come in we had speakers it was essentially just providing us the tools that we would need to move forward as portfolio artists and expand on our careers in whichever way we wanted to take them that was the thing too it was sort of open territory you know someone would come in you know I decided I'm gonna go full in into the singing thing and we'd be like yeah or someone would say I've completely pivoted I'm going to be an artistic director and we'd go woo! like it was so supportive for the people who like me were experiencing moment of like what am I do- where am I gonna go and like how do I get there um, 
So I feel like that really propelled me to where I am now in, in 2022. Um, there was also a, a big component of mentorship as well. So we all had assigned mentors that were mid-level. So someone who, looking back, like has been through what we've been through or who was like, oh, that wasn't that long ago when I was making those decisions that you're making right now. And that I think for all of us was really transformational to just sit down with someone on a weekly basis and identify with what they do now, but and seeing yourself where they are now and then them saying, oh, but I used to be where you were. That was phenomenal for me. So my mentor was Megan Lindsay, who's a soprano as well as an academic and a researcher. She's also doing a doctorate. So they did a phenomenal job pairing us all together. I mean, it was just like, pfft. we all we all were mind blown at how well we connected with our mentors. Um, so so I, I totally applaud programs like that, that, that gives singers, it doesn't even have to be singers or conductors in the program, I shouldn't say that, uh, coaches, pianists, whatever, um, who just wanna learn more about the industry and gave us resources and, and access to ask questions and, and grow and learn. And that was more than I ever could have asked for. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have that kind of support, especially with uh, today's day and age. It's really hard to just be a singer, whether yeah. you've made it quote unquote or not, it's still hard regardless. So I think yeah. incorporating other interests and skills into your life is a great way of like a keeping yourself alive, but be just branching out, meeting a lot of new people um like myself i'm a personal trainer in addition to a singer so like that's a really good way of you know incorporating a lot of different things and i think that's the way it's gonna be from now yeah. on yeah yeah i completely agree with that wholeheartedly like a 21st century artist to me is someone who's versatile but someone who also is growing through other experiences they're having but are able to bring things to the table from the other things that they're doing like i personally believe that the other things that i do make me a better singer and vice versa like that seems like a no-brainer to me so i i kind of rebuke <laughs> that, that idea that to be a real singer you only can sing and mm, like, no <laughs> like you know and even if my business hat's on it's like, if we're talking about income just like, again, business hats on, but like diver diversifying your income and having a job that you love, that gives you then the flexibility to sing and take gigs that you want instead of like, I have to do that to make ends meet. It just gives you so much more freedom and autonomy. Mm -hmm. Why would we not let people grow in that way? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think there's this big um, dated construct with a lot of a lot of teachers and a lot of advisors, advisors, coaches, whatever you want to call them saying that, you know, you're, you're only committed to singing if you're just doing singing yeah. and performing. And it's like, that's, and that's not a realistic way to do, do it anymore. No. You know? And so I, I, I applaud you. I think it's amazing that you have found this kind of business aspect on top of your singing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I would say too, like it, it fuels me. Like people often ask me like, oh, don't you, oh, I shouldn't say I'm not performing because I, I am still, um, but people will say, oh, like you were a performer solely or what they considered me to be. Um, like, don't you miss that? Like when you're just doing administration and I was like, no, because I get the same sort of excitement out of writing a really good paper to you know making a really killer spreadsheet like <laughs> frankly you know and that's what when i was working with megan as my uh, my mentor we talked about a lot like there can be different ways that you sort of fuel your your artistry and your creativity that sort of light light you up it doesn't necessarily have to be just singing and again you're bringing that then to the table as a singer it's i think it's all it's all a good thing you know and I think too, when you have these additional skills that you're bringing into not only the field, but your own life as well. Like nowadays, a singer just has to be able to do everything. They need to be able to film their own videos, cut their own videos, upload their own videos, all of these things. And this isn't just like for if you're uploading a recital or anything, this is like how auditions are happening these days. Oh. 100%. I always think of that meme that's like, I think it says when you're a freelancer, it's like who, who does this? It's like, I do all the things. I am the marketer. I am the finance person. I am that, you know, that's just sort of the nature of the beast these days. Like you are everything. You are the corporation. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know. I remember I was recording some auditions for stuff coming up recently and I was like doing it in my little tiny bedroom. I live like in a 650 square foot apartment and I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> I think the walls are white. Let me tell you. <laughs> When you get that instruction that's like, please film on a blank, yeah. new colored wall. You're like, got it. I live in Toronto. I, like, I'm i ready for you. I don't own this. I can't paint it. <laughs> See, I had the opposite issue because they asked for a white background. And at the time I was living in my parents' house and we, the only white background was in my room, which also had music notes all over it, oh. which was ironic because that was there before I was born it's my dad knew something I didn't but anyways oh I love that (laughs) I know it's quite funny but like there was no plain background so it was it was hard to find but it's also like the acoustics you have to think about like oh I can't just film in the hallway where there's a blank like spot behind me because then I'm you know bothering my father who is also working from home and all of the other things um yeah what a weird weird oh, online singing <laughs> oh yeah oh online singing <laughs> yeah. that's a whole other thing having all the equipment to sing with that's a different conversation <laughs> uh, I, I, we could be here all day <laughs> <laughs> we will be here all day <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah um you were you started talking about being um, a social media manager and i think that's also such an important skill for artists to have these days can you talk about how you got into that in the first place yeah, um, sort of haphazardly, honestly. Um, I sort of joke because I used to sort of pay attention to social media trends and, uh, and that kind of thing, even when I was like in high school, like when Instagram really first became a, a thing. Um, and my mom used to sort of like roast me about it. She's like, why do you care about that? I'm like, oh, I just think it's really interesting, the algorithm. Um, <laughs> but lo and behold, you know, I had a situation where I was like, I can just make you an Instagram account and then that worked and I was like oh cool so and the thing is is when you kind of tune into some of those like social media like online courses or someone on TikTok like how you can become a social media manager and they're like you know some of it's trial and error I would say that's actually 100% true like that's how I just sort of started getting into it like I think this will work because I look at social media a lot and I think that will work. And then, you know, actually through the um, fellowship, I got to do um, like a Q&A workshop type thing with some folks from Lenny's Studio, which is a, a really cool organization that does social media management for like the top, top people. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, like it was very validating. It was like, these are things that I do. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Um, and it was just sort of finding the right tools that worked for me and then you know, within six months, I had someone else asking me to do it. And within that same week, I had someone else asking me to do it. And now I just sort of do it for lots of people. And, you know, I sort of plan around what they want and what they need and what they want it to look like. And for a lot of those people, they already had uh, like an idea of their branding. So I was able to sort of meet with them. And oftentimes with everyone I do it for, we meet you know, let's say once a month, every couple of weeks, to just check in. What do we want to promote? What are we aiming towards? What are some like goals we're setting? Is it that you want more followers? Is it that you want more engagement? And we just sort of play with uh, play with some modeling on on that front and plan some content for them. Um, it's been really fun. I that's also again something I really like doing, and I think uses my creativity in another way. Yeah, that's so interesting. I'm always so interested for that, like this particular hat that you, that you wear, because, um, when I am on social media, which is limited, I admit, but, uh, I see people that have posted like every three hours or like every five hours, sometimes twice a day. And I'm like, what, what kind of time commitment do you put into, uh, that, that hat particularly? Yeah. Um, I sort of have an allotted amount of time for each person that I do or each group that I do um, social media for. Um, Some people say like, oh, all it takes is an hour a day. And if you are really like, if you have like a formula, I think that's actually my biggest advice on that front. Find a formula that works for you. So for me, I sit down sometimes on the weekend or the start of the week and I just plan the whole week of content out for everyone that I'm working with. Um, Usually it does only take an hour just because I know at that point like what it's probably going to look like what we're aiming to promote um, in terms of like the social media I do for Dean Artist Management you know I look at who has 
gigs this week? Who am I going to shout out because they have an album coming out or, or what have you? Um, and I plan the content that way. Um, and then oftentimes, you know, I sort of structured on my own, my own daily schedule. If I know I have a busy day, I'm going to plan the content and schedule it in advance. There are a ton of apps that schedule content for you. You just make it and you plop it in and it goes out at the time you want it to go out. Um, having like a business account on uh, Facebook like opens that function up. Um, so like Facebook and Instagram are linked. You can just have it all go out at the same time. There's also other apps that you can connect all of them to, um, all of them being like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, what have you. Um, and then I write the copy and I just send it out into the world. And I just sort of like keep abreast of like what changes there are. Like it used to be 30 hashtags. Now you should do like three to five, like, <laughs> like that sort of thing. Um, and that's just sort of my own, I guess, like professional development research <laughs> on that front. And uh, yeah, I just sort of craft crafted around uh, scheduling. And I am a big fan of scheduling things in advance like that. But if, because I don't really hold normal uh, working hours. <laughs> I'm not really a morning person. I, I would much rather stay up till 2 a.m. and get things done. Um, and if that's the case, I don't always want to send people an email at, at 2 a.m. So I schedule send send them so that they'll they'll reach their inbox at 8 a.m. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. I do recommend that for folks who sort of uh, are like, oh, I want this to go out at this day, but I don't want to be sending that on the weekend. Write it on Tuesday, schedule send it to go out on Sunday. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, that's my big wisdom I will impart there. I like scheduling things like that. <laughs> It's interesting. I, um, I, I did a lot of the social media for Opera Laurier while I was at in school. And it's always been something that I want to get into. So I'm definitely going to pick your brain at a later date about all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really interesting, actually, that you kind of you represent a, a vast array of things for social media, yeah. too. You yeah. know, like artist management, and you also do Marcia, right? Whitehead, right? So it's like, I do um, Dr. Sandra Coates. Coates. The, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wrong pedagogue. <laughs> um, um, but that's, I think that's also sort of the, the thing that keeps me on my toes with it and why I, I find fun in it because it's not that I'm pumping out content that's identical for, and I actually don't even like that. Like, I'm, not to be like shady, but I hate when I see someone's profile that I know they're paying someone to do and it looks identical to someone else's stuff that I know someone else is paying that person to do. I'm like, spice it up. <laughs> These are all different folks that you're creating content for that are unique and have their own voice. Like I will actually use Shannon as an example. I'm sure they won't mind. <laughs> but you know, Shannon has such a unique voice. I hate writing copy because I'm like, this doesn't sh sound like Shannon. <laughs> so we often like collaborate on like, what do you want that to sound like? Because, or, or do you want to write that today? Because I think you will say this better than I would. And I think that's also part of it too, is like knowing your audience, knowing who you're, you know, sending these promotional things to. And I, it shouldn't say it's not always just promotional. Sometimes it's about the person I am like, you know, like get to know me or, <laughs> or what have you. Um, or a throwback, a nice performance photo throwback. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it sort of keeps me on my toes and it keeps me uh, thinking of new ways to sort of showcase the, the people that I work with or the group that I work with, business that I work with, what have you. Um, yeah, everyone's different. They, have, they need to have their own brand colors and their own voice and their own, you know, own templates and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was wondering if we could actually go into something that you were just talking about. So you've been working with Dean Management for mm -hmm. a little over half a year now, right? Yeah. 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 Tell me about that. Yeah. So uh, again, I people always ask me like, oh, you know, how did you get into social media? How did you get into administration? And, and sometimes it's, it's really just been timing. Um, like I would say the first, this is, not to go on a tangent, but I would say the first sort of administrative adjacent position I had was uh, after the first year of my undergrad I stage managed my first opera and I uh, where I assisted and then the second summer so leaving my second year of my undergrad I stage managed it 
and um, I was like, wow, I love this. And then so people had in their minds like, oh, okay, well, Morgan can stage manage stuff. Maybe she'd be a good to assist at this administrative thing. So then I started doing that. And then I left my undergrad with sort of all these like one-off admin things. Uh, and then I started TAing when I got to U of T for my master's, which then turned into, can you do this administrative work study position for the voice department and I was like absolutely and then I did that and then it became can you do administrative stuff for this voice program um, that my teacher runs cozy slash coza and I was like sure I'm around um, and then I was sort of transitioning out of that role and uh, Dean Artis had an opening and I sort of had a relationship with them prior like um, so one of the agents did um, talks for my fellowship. You know, like I was in their brains and they were like, oh, and I also helped with their website when they did a rebuild of it. And they were like, oh, would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, yes. <laughs> so I, you know, applied, did the whole interview, did all that good stuff that you, you have to do. And uh, yeah, I've been working there for, yeah, you're right, six, seven-ish months um, as their administrator. And it's been a blast, honestly. Like, I am, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. So when it comes to, because I don't know much about this, when it comes to um, when the, the managers are seeking new talent, like, how does that process work? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this has actually been so interesting, sort of, again, because I straddle the territory of, like, young artist and administrator. Um, I also didn't really know what that situation was and I feel like that it has this like mysterious cloak around it that like no one knows like do I ask them yeah just write them that's it okay just write them just send me an email I say great thanks I'll put you on our audition list then we hold auditions wow. it's really not it's really not as mysterious as uh I think the industry has led <laughs> us to believe um I would say too like our our staff at Dean Artists like they just keep an eye on like what young singers are doing and what emerging talent is doing. Um, they go to shows all the time. Um, you know, one of our agents just did a whole thing on the West Coast to hear the Edmonton Bohem and the Calgary Merry Widow, which the young artists are performing in, you know, like the like they're seeing what's going on in the industry. I mean, that's their job to, not, to know what's going on. So in some ways, it's by virtue of them just hearing you with something and saying, oh, cool, like, do you want to do you want to sing for us sometime? Uh, and, you know, we held auditions, open auditions in the fall. Um, and we just had this huge list of people who wrote us. And we were like, great, come on in. And, you know, we heard 40, I think 40 people. Maybe it was less than that. I can't, I'm the one who organized it, so I really should know. <laughs> but we heard a lot of people that day, and it was so fun. And, you know, it's not... I would say it's maybe a slightly different audition than if you're going in for a role or something like that. Like um, the agents really sort of want to get to know who you are, see what kind of variety of repertoire you can do as well. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of at the end of the day. And I know, you know, for instance, Dean Artists, like there's a submission page on the website. Um, punch in your info. <laughs> and that's it. Um, and I would say it's the same for a lot of um, music theater agencies as well. Dean Artists is, um, we have like a sister agency, which is Talent House, which is a mm -hmm. music theater um, and film and commercial. They do everything. Um, they also just have like a submissions page on their on their website. So sometimes it's as easy as that, just writing and saying, hey, I'd, I'd love to be heard sometime or have a chat with, with you folks. And that's it. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. There's always been this kind of like mysterious kind of bubble around that whole question because there's so many people who'd be like, you have to do this, you have to do this. And it's always like, you have to win this competition specifically, or you have to like go to this country and audition for these people. And it's like, no. like, it's like right place, right time stuff. And I'm, I'm like, it can't be that complicated, but yeah, I mean, like one could argue that there is sort of a, 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 that does happen. Like, you know, if you win the Met competition, like IMG is probably going to be there, you know, <laughs> like, like that's, that's a thing for sure. Um, but, you know, if we're talking Canada, 
just write them whether it's us you know i i work at dean so i'm always going to be like woohoo but there's really fantastic agencies across canada that you can just write to and say i'd love to sing with you check out their rosters see if like that's a person you want to work with and get to know that that and that's the thing at the end of the day regardless of whatever anyone thinks uh, management should be a, a teamwork partnership thing like the singer is is in it as much as the agent is like we're both working together to see you succeed because the the agent's not going to succeed if you don't succeed <laughs> like it really is a relationship and uh, i think that's actually a really beautiful thing a way to think of it instead of like i have to do the right thing at the right time so this one person really likes me and then maybe will help me like make a career of myself it's like no no we all want to bloom and flourish together like that's the best part about it yeah Awesome. Well, um, that being said, you mentioned that you're a full-time student while doing all these other fun things, which sounds um, insane. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> um, but what inspired you to go get your PhD in? And I know your, your dissertation is on movement training for singers, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it's just something I always wanted to do. <laughs> Um, since I was young. Uh, I really like school. Um, both my parents are fairly academic people, um, mm -hmm. but don't have doctorates. They have master's degrees. And I remember when I was young, they were like, you know, you could do, you could do even more than us. Ha ha. Like that, that would be fun. And I was like, well, I'm going to, I think. And they were like, super. <laughs> I've always had a very supportive family in that sense. And I am uh, very thankful for that. But um, yeah, I just was like, I think the other thing too I should mention is like I'm what I would say is I, I like I'm younger than a lot of like my, my graduating class was when I finished my master's and I sort of looked at that and I went hmm do I feel like I as a singer am ready to exit my master's degree and uh, join the ranks of the young artist programs no uh, I wanted more time to like develop and uh, as one of my old teachers say like go back in the oven a little bit longer and bake a little bit more. <laughs> um, I just felt like I, I wanted that time and I felt like a DMA would give me that flexibility. Uh, I can take courses I want to take. Uh, you're allotted a certain number of lessons. You can take them whenever you want. Um, you know, there's three recitals, but there's not a ton of stipulation about what they actually have to be. Um, and then you get to re and I love doing research. I should say that too. I love doing research. And being able to just sort of pick something that I'm passionate about and jump into it. I mean, hey, could I, <laughs> could I ask for anything more ideal than that? No. Um, <laughs> and I accepted it. And a week later, um, the world shut down. So uh, timing, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, and I'm with a really fantastic cohort of, of colleagues in that program, too, that we've all sort of supported each other and our research goals and whatnot. Um, but you asked it about the movement thing specifically, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so I grew up dancing competitively, um, but I also started dancing like later in life. Like I wasn't like a childhood dancer. I started like in middle school and, um, I started to notice when I was in my undergrad that I'd be in situations where singers would be so uncomfortable being asked to do choreography. Like that was so outside of their realm of comfort. Like they were like, what I I don't know how to do that. Um, and then it started becoming like a comment I would get like from adjudicators or whatever. Oh, you you move so well on stage. I'd be like, well, I hope so. I spent many hours in the studio figuring that out. Um, but then I was like, why is that a special thing to point out? And, and that sort of like piqued my interest of like, shouldn't we all be striving towards that? Like what's, what's not happening here? And then I started noticing at summer programs I'd be going to that There'd be a dance class in the morning and no one would want to go because they were like, oh, I, I, that's too much for me in the morning. I'm uncomfortable. Uh, and I'd be like, well, haven't you danced before? And that's when I started getting like a resounding no from <laughs> from a lot of my singing yeah. colleagues. And both because it wasn't offered to them at school. Um, maybe it wasn't something that they were ever interested in growing up. Um, you know, I mean, I earlier said I had no sort of classical music training and I, or I didn't Western classical music training. Um, so maybe that was my trade off. <laughs> I did music theater and dance and, and not the mm -hmm. other stuff. Um, and whether it was like lack of access or they didn't have it at school or, or whatever, um, it wasn't something that people were given 
the space to learn and uh, and have the tools to you know jump into an operatic production and <laughs> do a waltz or <laughs> for example and uh when i got to my uh my doctorate and like really sitting down and writing in my application like what i wanted to look at um that came to mind right away because i was like why don't we do that why um if you look at the industry that is uh, usually expected for a singer at a high level to go to a house and do a production that has movement in it. Whether or not, you know, maybe the ballet corps, they're doing something slightly more advanced, but like you can probably think off the top of your head, multiple productions where you're gonna have to do a waltz, like I just said. Maybe it's a, pro a Baroque production and you have to do like a very stylized choreography situation. Maybe it's a completely off the wall, contemporary, you're at a house in Europe and you, you know, like a, pal of mine like had to dangle from aerial silks you know like who knows who truly knows but at the end of the day like having that extra skill and this also again sort of full circle ties into our idea of a portfolio artist and bringing that to the table as a singer having dance movement having body bodily awareness knowing how to move yourself on stage in a way that you are comfortable and, and know your own self it gives the singer autonomy but also gives you again business hat gives you something to market Oh yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, do you want me to try this? Oh, I can do that. Like it just gives you more more tools. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at why 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 don't we do that? Uh, we <laughs> we should be doing more of that. Um, what are different methods, techniques, ways that we could incorporate that into the current structures of courses that are offered? Um, and then I'm surveying sort of what different programs across Canada do offer and sort of see where we can fill those gaps in. Right. That's so cool. So earlier you mentioned that you stage managed. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the process behind stage, behind the backstage, all that stuff? Yeah. And would, would it be something that you'd, you would do again? Like, is that something you'd seriously do again? Yeah, I loved it. Um, and again, I, I go back to the saying of, I think I was a good stage manager because I was also a singer. Like I knew, um, so I worked on the, the opera, The Bells of Bedeck, uh, in their uh, opening two seasons. Um, I was 18. <laughs> and so the first, uh, first season, I um, had never seen a full opera before, uh, but I had done a lot of music theater and spent a lot of time backstage and sort of like had an idea of like what would be useful. And there was also a stage manager that I was working under the first season. And I just sort of absorbed like everything that I could, but also a lot of it was because I was sort of learning on the fly. It's a long story, um, but I was learning on the fly and I was backstage always just thinking if I was about to go on for this scene, what would help me? And it was like having the costume set up a certain way, having the props set up a certain way. Uh, that the scene changes were a little bit faster because then this person can get on earlier and settle before they have to start singing. Like that, like that is what informed a lot of my work. Um, and then I was asked back um, the next season. And then I was the stage manager and, um, mm -hmm. you know, calling lighting cues and, and all that stuff. Um, but it was the same thing. Every time I made a choice, it was about the singer. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna not take my don't don't change your blocking because I'm gonna call a lighting cue. I want to take the lighting cue off of you, or um, you know what can I do to help you in this scene because I noticed that this set piece is in your way, <laughs> or, or what what have you, right? Um, in terms of like putting things together, I mean, I think sometimes again I know we talked about like management having like a shroud of mystery around it. Um, I think sometimes like productions have a shroud of mystery <laughs> around them yeah. too. Like singers jump in and then it often leaves them with a lot of questions of like, what's going on right now? <laughs> Who's making the decisions here? Like Especially the first meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, what, is, what is happening? And like, I would just like to say like in any situation where I've been like an administrator or like part of a production coming together, like there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes and like mm -hmm. hours that people put in figuring out how to best do that. And if something's not working and the singers are frustrated and they're like, no one's listening to me. I'm like, I assure you there is someone at home right now as stressed as you are trying to make this better for you. Um, or we would hope, or we would hope, you know, like <laughs> I don't like that. That is my goal scenario that like, if there's anything that ever goes wrong, that I'm there if in a hypothetical scenario that I'm there to help them navigate through that. And whether that's like 
an administrative position or a, a stage management position. Um, but yeah, I would totally, I would totally stage manage again. I loved that, and I learned so much. And again, I, it was the same thing. I learned so much as a stage manager and what goes on behind the scenes. Everything from like how were we planning rehearsals to like equity rules in terms of like how long people could sing for. But I didn't know. I was nineteen. Like I was like learning what opera was. Um, and I came away from that like, oh, I think I, I think I kind of get it now, just a little bit, you know, like, a little bit more for sure. Um, and I guess that's actually, um, again, not too tangent, but something I would also add on my spiel about management. Like, yes, it's a relationship, but and yes, they want you to succeed. Um, but like, they're just also here to make things easier for you. Um, I know a lot of people say like, oh, don't get management until you have something to manage. And I'm like, okay to an extent, I guess, yeah. But also no, like they're there to help you make those tough decisions. They're there to help you like pick the best repertoire package for you. They're always going to give you their advice. I mean, they heard you and liked you and signed you. They know what they liked when they heard you. Like a lot of the conversations that our artists have with our agents is like, how am I presenting myself these days? How do you think we should move forward with casting for this next season? What arias should I be recording? Um, and I think people don't get that. Like even when you move from young artist territory, like established singers, quote unquote, still have to audition for people they don't know, uh, or at least have materials ready to submit for people they don't know. Um, so those are conversations and whether it's, you know, um, you feel like someone's not giving an, giving you a fair or appropriate fee, why should you be in that position? Your agent can jump in and be like, oh, mm, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> and, and, yeah. I, and, and that's the thing, right? It gives singers a protection and a, and a sense of autonomy that they can say to someone, I would much rather do this. And then they don't have to be the person who t to tell the presenter, especially when you're an emerging artist. Like you don't want to like, you know, like, tick off someone that you're just starting to form a collegial relationship with you know and your agent can be the one who jumps in and goes actually that accommodation is too far from the venue and we need to look at a different option for that or what have you and that's again as I was as a stage manager looking for the best thing for the singer it's the same thing like when I'm an administrator why should you worry about having your bio proofread on the day of your big audition? I'll do that for you. <laughs> so that's been sort of like the joy of working at Dean is that I get to do that, those itty bitty things. So the artists can focus on what they're going to be doing that day, whether it's a performance or an audition or traveling to a gig or whatever. Don't stress. We have that. I'll, I'll get that to the presenter. Oh, don't worry about that. I will write that for you. Boom. You know, it's, it's all about sort of, um, you know, supporting and protecting the singer. Yeah. I think too, with that is when you have that experience and I know like, especially when you're doing university productions and you're seeing your stage manager do all these things and then you're going into the real world and doing an opera and stuff, it kind of gives you this appreciation for them because without them, essentially, you would be screwed. Um, I was wondering if we could do a nice little pivot uh, I know that you love the question coming up because we've talked about it before and I'm really interested to see if yours has changed from the last time that we did. I like the look of worry just for a minute. I know, <laughs> I'm so concerned, but I know you like this question. What is your why? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. My, my answer to that's always changing. Um, As it should. Yeah, it, always changing. Oh formulated answer right now no you can take all the time you need I'm gonna cut it out no, no. <laughs> no but I mean, the first time I sort of sat down with that uh with that question is uh or was when I was in the fellowship with AOC and we did this like really amazing workshop where it was like sit down and you write it out what's your why mm -hmm. and I was like hmm Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, oh, I don't know. Interesting. I don't have an answer to that. Um, 
Yeah, I just genuinely didn't. It, particularly singing. I was like, I don't have it because I'm good at it, I think. Like, because, and then I was like, that's not really a good answer. Um, and I was like, because I like it. I was like, oh, sometimes I don't. So, so <laughs> that's not an answer either. Um, and, they, and, uh, and they said that, you know, if your answer is I like music, is that, is that really your answer? Is that, because if you can negate it, that was, that was the, the catch. If you can say, I like singing, but I could fill that in faster than, than I sing because. Um, so that's really interesting. And uh, I then had to sort of just sit with that. Oh, wow, I don't have an answer to that. So I get, as things have moved around in my life and it has, as I've started to do things, that answer has definitely shifted, but I feel like it hasn't solidified yet, which, which I think is in some ways fun because it means I'm still growing and figuring out that. Like as much as I do, as I do all these things, I don't have like a, yeah, <laughs> like that's why. And I would say though, that even in talking today in our like back and forth about, you know, you, why did you decide to do this dissertation this way? Why did, and I'm like, oh, the sort of common theme is that I just want to support singers as an administrator, as a, uh, as a colleague even like if I am singing I want to support my fellow singers if I like I'm usually that person in the production that's like excuse me like <laughs> no um yeah <laughs> like I've I've always sort of been an advocate I think um and I also uh, as I mentioned like I I didn't I wasn't exposed to any sort of classical music western classical music growing up and I didn't really have anyone uh helping me through that journey when I arrived at undergrad and went what like what is happening what have I gotten myself into <laughs> what is Italian what is German I don't know like I like so I learned so much through like trial by fire I think like and especially even like moving from the like small side of the Maritimes to Toronto was also like a jarring thing that I learned a lot from and uh I guess at the end of the day like all the things that I've sort of absorbed and like learned from I just want to like impart that to others um and I love helping people with applications for things I love proofreading letters of intent I love editing essays I love like I, I feel like every year I've Send me your email <laughs> hit me up I'm like available and around like I love writing bios for people and I and that's why I always joke like the jobs I do now whether it's like I think that picture of you looks great let's post it or uh I wrote a new bio for you like I do that every day for fun and for my friends and for the people around me now I just get paid to do what I love what <laughs> I, I do a job with the, just with the things I'm going to do anyway. Like, that's so great. Um, so, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it's like being an advocate and, and helping my community and my industry. Yeah. Did I just find my why? <gasps> Is that you my heard it here first, folks. Yeah. <laughs> that made me it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you have so many hats. You're going to have so many emails after this is posted. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. You, and if people ask for my email, give it to them. Why not? <laughs> no problem. Yeah, in the description box. Um, <laughs> Personal email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, quantifying the value, uh, I think, of, of what you do, I think is really tricky mm -hmm. for people, especially if you're just sort of like getting your footing in your career. And whether that you're a singer or like, you know, uh, oh, hey, can you do a recital? How much would you charge for that? And it's like, oh, no one's ever asked me that before. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I think that's actually one of the trickiest things is, is you know, how, like, what does that cost? And uh, oftentimes it, it falls into like a, an hourly situation and like, and then we're like quantifying like this much effort per hour equals dollar sign. Um, but it's like, I, Shannon brought up to me like, you know, you could also think of it as per service. You're doing this thing and no matter how many hours it takes, uh, you know, you are offering your expertise in the thing that you do. And I was like, oh, okay. that's true. <laughs> You know, and it and it's so amazing to like have the support of the people I work with to be like, yeah, 
like you are you know doing this amazing thing with these people and are offering this amazing guidance and, and labor and whatever you want to frame that as and you should be fairly compensated and that also goes for singers and I think that's also a, a, a tricky thing a lot of people don't know how to advocate for themselves yeah it's because we're taught to be so humble that we actually don't it's add, so like we humble. can't say yeah I'm talented <laughs> so humble. Yep. We're here so, to- like thank you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you is actually really hard for people. It took me a long time to just accept a compliment about my voice instead of being like, well, I messed this thing up. Oh, I made a mistake the year. Mm, You know, like, yeah, I think that's, and again, like, uh, I've, you know, I've been sort of on the tangent of like, uh, I also keep saying the word tangent. Now I'm just like very aware of that. Um, (laughs) But managers being an advocate for the singers on their roster, like that's a great thing. Um, But if you don't have management, it's like learning to be an advocate for yourself and Mm -hmm. saying like, that's not a fair rate. And also too, like asking your colleagues who are perhaps more established, quote unquote, or asking someone you know who has management like do you do you think this is a fair right i think people are also like cagey when it comes to like talking about money and logistics sometimes too um but it's like you should know if you're being fairly compensated and you should know if and and value your value yourself and advocate for yourself and whether it's you know is something like accepting a compliment i also am like that um or you know making sure that you're being fairly compensated it's all sort of under that umbrella of of advocating for yourself i think that's really tricky for singers um well we should probably let you get back to your busy uh busy life so maybe are you okay if we finish off with some rapid fire yeah awesome sure we got yeah. our questions oh okay hannah would I'm you like, like to start us off i will this will even be a surprise for Simi because we didn't plan these ahead of time. I just chose oh, one for okay. myself today. Okay, I have to get my game face on again, like my 60 second bio. <laughs> okay, Whoa. Okay, here we go. A little primping and preening. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, where in the world would you travel to right now if you could? New York. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna go to New York in December to see uh, Sandra at the Met in Tosca, and then didn't realize that uh, tests to get back into the country were two hundred dollars. So I said, "Yeah, yeah, no." Best advice you were ever given? Um, I'd say no to things. Um, I am getting better at that. I would take on a lot because I can just do a lot as we know and i would just overload myself and then i'd be like why did i do that um so why am i so tired <laughs> I'm exhausted um so i've recently quit stuff for the first time what mm-hmm. like that was a huge changing point for me i just quit a bunch of stuff and uh who knew sleeping eating great things to do great things to fit into your day and uh, now i leave my weekends open i leave my evenings open <gasps> that's my advice do that because i used to not I'll work on it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, young singers and like young entrepreneurs and young people emerging into whatever industry, you know, there's that mentality of like, I'm going to grind and hustle, <laughs> like work the whole day. I'm up at four. And I'm so, yeah. yeah. Like, no, sleeping's more important. I've learned that. Yeah. It's tough when I have to wake up at five every morning, but. That too. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go to bed at like nine, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry. We're off topic. Can I go to bed? <laughs> If, well, I, I guess we kind of know the answer, but if you weren't a singer slash what you do now, what would you be? Uh, uh, mm, um, mm, I'd probably still be a consultant of some sort. Um, uh, yeah. Um, people have often been like, maybe you'd be a good lawyer. Um, I took the LSAT, a prep mock LSAT for fun once. It was enjoyable. Um, so maybe that would be a road I'd go down. I don't know. I was just really interested to see what all the hype was about. So I wrote a mock one. Um, and um, yeah, I would say something sort of in that in that vein. I like leadership positions and I like helping others. I have a very broad answer. Yeah. the lawyer later, Yeah. yeah. Um, guilty pleasure or bad habit you'll never break? Not drinking enough water. Mm, You're a really, singer! I, yeah, I know. Mm, I really don't drink enough water. I That's the first thing that came to mind because I 
earlier you were like, oh, I'm drinking so much water. And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> I know, I started drinking a gallon of water a day. But it, you're peeing all the time. Yeah, no, I don't. I really don't drink enough water. I think that's my worst habit. I, although, did you say guilty pleasure? Because guilty pleasure is probably drinking. I, guilty Starbucks. pleasure or bad habit. But if you want to say okay, bad habit, pleasure. too, not enough water. Guilty pleasure is a lot of Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we're vibing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that is the vibe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I can't read my writing half the time. What's your party trick? Uh, singing a lot of music theater pieces. So then you're coming over to my party because yeah. every time Hannah's over, we're putting on musical theater karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do a little bit of music theater, duets, solos, and then we go and sing some opera right now afterwards. It's great. Listen, that is my type of party. Yeah. 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 Not willingly do I sing the classical music after I start drinking, though. That's how no, I do Because I want to hear it. <laughs> um, what's the most recent thing you have learned? How to quit things and say no. <laughs> That's been a been a big thing, and uh, finding time for myself more. A, Thank you. Oh, <laughs> um, that's been um, a big thing for me recently. It's just like taking time for myself and uh, away from work, shutting the computer. Imagine. Amazing. Yeah. Hannah <laughs> and your sneezes. <laughs> Oh, this every single time. I love Anyways. that. I feel like there's another one coming too. You're doing great, sweetie. I'm very proud yeah. of you. Um, I actually don't know if I can I can guess, but introvert or extrovert? Ooh, I am very much introverted. Okay. Yeah, like I definitely need time away from people. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this will be the only thing I do today. Yeah. <laughs> what is your happy place? Oh. Uh, uh, okay, I would. There's two options. Uh, one is um, home, be, being at home. <laughs> um, and the other one is uh, I like being in theaters, backstage, on stage, in the audience don't matter i like being in them and around them and absorbing that energy there yeah yeah um, what composer would you talk to living or dead um, um oh wow that's really tricky um Maybe uh, Lily Boulanger, because I'm currently learning one of her song cycles, and I really, really love it. And uh, she died very young, actually, at the age I currently am. And I just feel like very like, mm, with this cycle right now, and I would have loved to have, I, she just seems like an amazing human and who died too early and with a beautiful output of music that could have extended beyond uh, you know so yeah i would go with lily because i'm i'm really into her right now yeah favorite swear word in any language fuck actually <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone who answers is like yeah obviously <laughs> yeah it's a multi-purpose word you, it's it could be in many different tones many different it's a portfolio artist <laughs> that, 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 yeah you can use it in all of the businesses <laughs> uh, yeah absolutely yeah um, well, morgan thank you so much for doing this with us can you tell the people where they can find out more information about you Absolutely. Uh, you can go to my website, which is Morgan Reed Soprano. You can go to my uh, Facebook, which is Morgan Reed Soprano, and my Instagram, that is Morgan Reed Soprano. <laughs> um, branding. Um, yeah. yeah, consistency. Um, I will try to post more regularly on my social media, but um, uh, yeah, if you need to ever get in touch with me, you can do it through my website. Um, it was or the email we're putting below. Right. No, you can also, because uh, hashtag consistency is key. You can probably guess what that email is. <laughs> is, it, yeah. is it Morgan Reed Mezzo? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, 
that's where you can find me and uh, see what I'm up to. Awesome. Thank you so much, Morgan. It was such a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, this was a blast. Thank you. We'll see you soon. And our goal is to create a similar platform, but from the perspective of a young singer. And shit. And shit today. Right. Your line. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, last time. We got this. We got this. Ready?